First things first, I really want to thank you guys for the positive reception surrounding the merch store, yongya.com, launched yesterday, for those who don't know. You try something new, you don't know if it's going to go well, but to see the immensely positive reception surrounding the designs, like the, the hat back there, the shirt here, the parodies of the surprise mechanic, and the Bethesda Nuka Cola Dark Rum... Uh, to see that be received so well and to see such enthusiasm behind all of that really made my week. I just can't thank you guys enough. But you're not here for that. Let's talk about the news. Halo Infinite. So this is a game that's been kind of going through a rough period uh, after it revealed some gameplay. A lot of people weren't happy with how it looked graphically. It seemed like a downgrade from what was shown in years past. A lot of technical issues like pop-in and just environments lacking detail, everything looking too plasticky. All of that was highlighted by the community. And the folks at 343 responded saying, hey, we're aware of the feedback. And they delayed the game and are taking that feedback into consideration. And hopefully the final results will be something that a lot of people will be pleased with. But after all that, Halo Infinite finds itself in another period of negative PR because of some decisions they have made surrounding the game's customization. So the following information comes from John Junichek, who is community manager at 343 Industries, who posted a blog post that details something called the coding system, which is essentially the Destiny 2 shader system that nobody liked. People getting the notion that Halo Infinite is going to do something similar is not something that's being well received, especially considering past entries when it comes to color customization of armor. It's always been something that you could just do, but now just changing colors of armor pieces, that being monetized, adding unnecessary inconveniences there to monetize this aspect is not sitting well with a lot of folks. So here's what the blog post says. First of all, here is a render of an armor in red and some of the potential customization that you'll be able to engage in with colors and textures, among other things. They do highlight here that the coding system is going to have some element of marketing promotion, working with companies like Mega Constructs Toys, Monster Energy Drinks, and Mandela's Cookies, Candies, and more to provide a number of in-game items, whether it's two times XP boost, emblems, and armor coatings. A bit like Marvel's Avengers, where, you know, like Verizon had their own uh, cosmetic skins for the different characters that you could only unlock by engaging with Verizon services and all that. So as an example, this weapon right here with the green highlights, this is a coding that's specific to Monster Energy. As stated right here, we shared a closer look at the Monster Energy weapon codings in this Xbox Wire blog, and clicking on it will take you to this page that shows you the coding in question, the shiny green kind of texture and material that's layered on top of the weapons. And then on top of that, they said right here, we want to provide a bit more clarity around what you can expect from coatings. Player expression has been a key pillar of Halo Infinite. And the blog post states that this is why the team has developed a new system, which is a powerful and flexible way to create customization content quicker and more robustly than we have been able to do in the past. As for what exactly a coating is, it is defined according to 343 Industries as a seven layer shader that allows us to put any artist authored color material or pattern into seven channels and apply it to in-game items like weapons armor and vehicles so here is a showcase of vehicle customization here's a showcase of weapon customization and then scrolling down you'll find more details about how coloration specifically will work because again in past entries coloring your armor and all that was just inherent to the game it was just something you could do the way it's described here reads coloration along with materials and patterns will now be baked into the coating taking the place of the primary secondary armor color options found in prior games and this is the aspect that people take great umbrage with. The fact that coloration is kind of being fused with the materials and patterns rather than allowing that to be a separate component 
that allows you to take materials and patterns and then apply whatever color scheme you want separately. And the blog post adds, while we understand that many players are fond of the previous color system, we're very excited about the breadth and scope of armor, weapon, and vehicle customization options that will be available in Halo Infinite because of the coding system. Additionally, players should expect more robust per piece armor customization choices akin to what was available in Halo Reach versus what was offered in Halo 5 Guardians. And as we expand our customization capabilities with armor geometry, materials, colors, and textures, it's important to the team that players are given even more opportunities to express themselves within the game itself. More on that later. So while they are definitely expanding the customization system of Halo Infinite from past entries, the fact of the matter is that it's very clear that for the sake of monetization, they seem to be doing something they really don't need to do. Do keep in mind that Halo Infinite's multiplayer mode is going to be a separate component to the single player, and the multiplayer is going to be free to play, so you don't have to get the single player Halo Infinite and purchase that in order to participate in the multiplayer. That's what they're going for to bring in as many people as possible. So they do have some leeway when it comes to monetization, given that the multiplayer is free to play. It does need to make its money back somehow, but by doing so through a feature as basic as coloring your armor, which has been in Halo since forever, and which plenty of other games implement without issue, to monetize the coloration aspect that so many Halo fans are familiar with, it's just something that's not sitting well. People just want the ability to color things the way they want without having to shell out extra cash. Or wasting time just for the basic ability to make your chess piece red or blue or whatever color you prefer. Just going through more effort than is required for something so simple and basic. Here's a clip posted on Reddit that highlights what people would want out of Halo Infinite's customization system. And you can see right here how cool it'd be if someone could just go through a gradient of colors, modify the saturation and the lightness and darkness of the color, and just really go all out with uh, how customizable the armor pieces are. Really make it your own. How cool would this be instead of a customization system that limits you to what's there in the coatings? And you never know. There may be certain colors that are not available for specific coatings, and so that might limit things further. It's just an all-around worse system. Somebody else on Reddit spoke out about this, stating, Dear 343, shaders suck, sincerely everyone. Or in more long-winded terms, a lot of people weren't pleased with the infinite demo that was shown off. A lot of people have already given up on the franchise because, among other things, Halo 4 and 5, please stop making stupid decisions like this that are putting even more people off of this game. The player base for Halo has already dwindled enough. Stop trying to make it even smaller. Shaders suck. We all know that. I'll never know why you've decided to go for shaders over the primary secondary color scheme and trying to sell it as an enhanced customization is bullcrap. And then in response, another user highlights all they need to do is let players select the colors on the coding and I'd bet the reception would have been unanimously positive. So separate coloration from the stuff like patterns and textures and unique armor designs. Coloration is a feature that's been in video games for decades, but in more recent years, more and more AAA publishers are removing what was once an inherent feature and trying to find ways to monetize that again through stuff like shaders. And that's how you got Reddit users like this individual highlighting how those who don't have a lot of money to spend on Halo Infinite will end up looking something like this because when they do get one coating, they can only apply that to one armor piece and then the next coating you get will probably be random. And so if you don't spend money on the stuff that you want, you're going to have to grind out for all this stuff. But there is no guarantee that you'll get the stuff that you want. It's more likely you'll get a random mix of a lot of things. And that may lead to results like this where... Every armor piece is a different color, material, texture. Beyond that, you've got memes like this. In light of recent events, Halo fans, when Microsoft learns of this, they will take your head. 343 Industries, fool. They ordered me to do it. <laughs> Here's another meme making fun of the more opportunities to express themselves statement featured in the blog post that uh, seems to not match up with the coding system that they're implementing. And the meme right here reads, Me right now, I try to get pink armor in Infinite. You know how expensive this gear is, son? In reference to the fact that with the coding system, it's going to be a lot more difficult to make your armor look consistent because it's 
possible that you're going to get a lot of these items randomly. You're not going to get the same colors all the time. So it's all going to be a mix and match of things. And then here's somebody else who said, in Halo Online, you're able to choose from any color imaginable. This is what Halo Infinite's color selection should be modeled from. Now, in light of all this backlash, the community manager, John Junichek, did respond and here's what he had to say. I'm seeing a decent amount of confusion around codings out there, so I wanted to jump in and address some of the common talking points thread below. Codings and therefore colors can only be purchased? No, that is not the case. There will be all kinds of customization items, including codings that can be earned in game and earned as special rewards. Will there be purchases? Sure. Is that the only way? Absolutely not. The same could be said about Destiny 2. You could either purchase the shaders or you could earn them in game. But again, the issue was earning them in game was a grind. It was also a bit of a pain in the ass because shaders would occupy your inventory slots. The fact of the matter is that in Destiny 2, you could earn them in game, but it was still very inconvenient. It still restricted players' ability to freely customize themselves and express themselves. It was still a limiting aspect of the game that shouldn't have been there, especially considering Destiny 1 had the superior just unlock a color and apply system. Now, John brings up the question, why not a hybrid system where I can change my colors and the rest of the coding remains the same? The response reads, we love this idea, but colors and materials are designed and built into each specific coding. I'm hoping to elaborate on the tech behind coatings in a future community update. I find it hard to believe that they're unable to reverse this, that they're unable to separate color customization from materials and textures and armor piece designs. It is hard for me to believe that this wasn't driven by monetization. I mean, we'll see what John has to say in the tech behind coatings update. But I get the sense that it's not going to convince people that this is how it has to be, that colors have to be fused with the coatings instead of colorization being a separate component. John proceeds, will there be a good variety of coatings? Yes, although moving away from the old color system was a tough call, it has allowed us to go into greater detail and variation with armor color, materials, patterns, etc. You're going to look great in Halo Infinite. I'll say again, you can have that expanded customization system in Halo Infinite and keep colorization as a separate free component that can be applied to any coding. To suggest that it has to be either one or the other, it's just something that I simply don't believe for a second. Hell, this customization would be superior to past Halo entries because there are more layers to the armor pieces that can be individually customized. If you give players the ability to take each piece and customize the colors individually and have free reign over that, that would be incredible. But the inconvenience of colors being specific to each coding that you earn, that seems like an artificial limitation. Again, just for the sake of monetization more than anything. John then proceeded by retweeting another tweet that he posted the day prior when he said, yep, we're not sitting around thinking of ways to take things away from players. No developer is. We're focused on building systems that can allow for better player expression. Yes, that required a tough call in this case, but we're excited by the system's overall potential. Oh, come on. The claim that developers aren't looking to take away from players for the sake of monetization is such a blatant lie. Developers may not necessarily have a choice because of publisher mandates to monetize a game, but the only way you create some of these monetization systems is by artificially introducing issues, artificially taking stuff away. And based on what we know now, that seems to be what's happening with Halo Infinite, where it doesn't really seem like they need to do colorization this way, but they're doing so because that way, separate colors of the same coatings can be monetized separately rather than one coding that players can apply freely different colors to. Unfortunately, with these live service games, it's all about how do we take away so players have to pay for that thing that we could have just given them. John's posts conclude with, obviously this doesn't answer every question out there, but I hope this helps clarify some of the confusion until we're able to dive deeper into customization. Well, for my part, this doesn't clarify any confusion and it reaffirms what a lot of people feared. Codings will work like shaders in Destiny 2. And as Destiny 2 proved, just because you can earn them in game doesn't make the shader system something good or positive or better than a system that simply allows you to unlock colors 
or a system that straight up gives you a gradient of colors that can be applied. All I'm seeing here are vague excuses that don't explain much of anything. He just says right here when asked, you know, why not just let me unlock the colors, change the colors willy nilly. He says, we love the idea, but you know, the colors are built into each specific coding, but why? Why does it have to be that way? Why can't colors be applied individually when so many other games from years past have proven that it isn't rocket science to implement that and the lack of a proper convincing explanation is what's leading people to believe that they're just doing this on purpose, again, artificially limiting the colorization system for monetization purposes, which to me sounds like the more likely scenario. Now look, at the end of the day, we're gonna have to wait until Halo Infinite's multiplayer component launches before we can really judge how codings work and whether they're well implemented. Are they rewarded often enough? Can they be stored in a convenient manner? Or is the game gonna get real stingy about it to the point where it clearly is there to encourage players to visit the store? I hope it turns out that I'm being paranoid and that it's actually gonna be really well balanced and that the codings will be implemented in such a way where it feels like I'm always finding the things that I want and really feeling some semblance of freedom and customization. But when you think logically about how coatings and shaders work versus how a more traditional form of coloration works in video games, it's clear that the latter is just superior. There's no hurdles to jump through in order to apply a color. You just apply the color. Same can't be said for a coatings or shader system that has you put some effort in or put some money in to apply a color that you want. This all just seems so unnecessarily inconvenient and unnecessary inconvenience is kind of what fuels microtransaction storefronts. It's how they get people to buy things by inconveniencing them enough to the point where people finally throw their hands up and go, screw it, I'm done with this. I don't wanna keep doing this. I'm just gonna buy the thing so I don't have to grind over and over and over again and go through this uh, really tedious process. But at the end of the day, only time will tell how this all turns out, how well balanced this all ultimately ends up being, and whether this will ultimately be a boon or a detriment to Halo Infinite's cosmetic customization. But until then, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on how 343 Industries has described their coding system and whether it's something you're on board for, for this free-to-play separate multiplayer component, or if it's something you don't find acceptable, drop a comment. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.